Okay, so limits at infinity. So last time we talked about when limits themselves are infinite, right? So now we're going to talk about what happens as x goes to infinity, right? Not when the y values actually go to infinity. So let's consider um, a limit very similar to the one we did last time. So let's look, lim as x goes to infinity of, excuse me, 1 over x. All right, so let's try and just break this down quickly, right? We already kind of know what these symbols mean from last time. So remember last time we talked about the infinity symbol, right? Infinity is not a number. It, you know, I don't want to see things like x going to infinity from the left, x going to infinity from the right. I mean, these things don't make sense. Infinity is not a number, but the symbol x going to infinity does mean something. We talked about the symbol last time. Can someone remind us what this actually means um, as x goes to infinity? We had like a whole five minute discussion about what infinity means. The numbers are getting arbitrarily large. Arbitrarily large. And what does that mean to you? Let's get someone else to say that. What what does arbitrarily large mean to you? Who said that, by the way? I didn't actually see who said it. Who said it? Naomi. Okay, thank you, Naomi. All right, so who wants to kind of go off what Naomi said? Arbitra X gets arbitrarily large. What does that mean? Let's make that, let's kind of explain that. Does so we have a whole discussion about what this means? Do we have examples of this? Vincent, uh, yes? Yeah. Uh, it gets bigger and bigger, but never surpasses threshold. So Never okay. surpasses a threshold? Whoa. I think you have it backwards. If, if I have numbers that get bigger and bigger, but never surpass a certain threshold, then that's not getting arbitrarily large. It doesn't mean it gets, um, eventually it'll catch up to like a certain point and surpass it. That's right. So when I say X gets arbitrarily large, it means if you give me any number, I could consider x values that are even bigger than that, right? Um, so let's actually write that down. So as x gets arbitrarily large, right? So you should not think of x as just some large number. You should think of x as as large as you want it to be, right? There's a difference. Um, the other thing that's kind of, you know, a little technical here is the infinity symbol in this case also means X is positive, right? Otherwise, we would have had negative infinity. So X is arbitrarily large and positive. Okay, so let's complete the sentence. As X gets arbitrarily large and positive, what happens to the values of 1 over X? Did I spell it? arbitrarily is like one of those words that just has too many, too many syllables and too many of the same letter in it. Arbitrarily, there we go. It's like substitution or banana or something. Like it's just too much. Okay, like I don't have if I don't have that spell check. If I don't have that red underline, I ain't never spelling that word correctly. So the values of one over x, they get closer to zero. They get smaller and smaller. They get arbitrarily small. OK, good. So I like that phrase, arbitrarily small. In other words, they get as close to 0 as you want, right? Not just closer and closer to 0, but as close to 0 as you want. That's what we mean by the limit being 0. Now, first of all, if you're unsure of, of that fact, you know, again, think about kind of a table of values. Think of x. Make a little table of values where x is getting arbitrarily large. You know, let's say powers of 10. You know, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, and so on and so forth. And look at 1 over x, right? And what happens there? 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and so on. So we can see that as x gets larger, or arbitrarily large, 1 over x only gets smaller, but it gets arbitrarily close to 0. So that's exactly what we mean by the limit being 0. Now, what this positive business, how did that affect the value of this limit? So x getting arbitrarily large and positive means that 1 over x gets arbitrarily small, right? So in other words, arbitrarily close to 0. How did the fact that x was positive affect that statement? Where did we use the fact that x was positive?
Gets close to zero from the right. Okay. Good. Actually, that's the only place where we really use it as positive. We didn't really care about that in this case, but I'll make that a point. Not only did x go, not only did 1 over x go to 0, I can say that 1 over x also stayed positive. So let's make that a note. So in some contexts, it might actually be useful to know that not only did 1 over x go to 0, 1 over x went to 0, but also remained positive, right? So you might want to put like a little like 0 plus here. You know, I mean, the limit is still 0. Don't get me wrong. 0 from the right side is the same thing as 0 from the left side. But in some contexts, it might matter. For instance, what if I had ln of 1 over x, right? Then the fact that 1 over x goes to 0 from the right side, the fact that 1 over x stays positive is relevant, because then that means I can actually take the ln of that number. So in some contexts, it would matter. So I was actually, so I'm glad someone actually pointed that out. Just for the purposes of calculating this limit though, it didn't matter, right? So if I had say negative numbers, what if I had limit as X goes to negative infinity of one over X? What would you say about that? So now x going to negative infinity means that x is arbitrarily large and negative. What would you say about the values of 1 over x in that case, if x itself is arbitrarily large and negative? And again, think about a table of values. Negative one, neg x is negative one, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000. So Jacqueline says they still approach zero, right? They still approach zero. The only difference is the values are just negative, but overall they still approach zero. Okay, so that's going to be our basis for the all the limits we do today. The fact that a reciprocal, 1 over x, if x goes to infinity, right, if x gets arbitrarily large, then 1 over x goes to 0 on both sides, all right? Here's the graph of 1 over x. Right, so as x goes to infinity, we can see what happens. As x gets arbitrarily large, the y values get arbitrarily small. Right, That's what the graph suggests here. And as x goes to negative infinity, so as x goes off to the left, again, the y values get arbitrarily small. All, right, all the y coordinates uh, approach the y coordinate of the x-axis. OK, so now I just want to say, so in general, So if the number n is greater than 0, and I have now the limit as x goes to infinity of, say, 1 over x to the n, right? If I have a reciprocal, so n is positive. So it's like 1 over x, 1 over x squared, 1 over x to the 1 half, right? n is positive. So this isn't like, if n were negative, it would actually be something flipped over, like x squared or x to the 1 half. So that's why I have to say n is positive. How can we figure out this limit? Well, this is just our regular limit law. Uh, this is really as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, the whole thing raised to the n power, right? That's just algebra and a property of limits. And we know that that's 0, and 0 raised to the n power is 0. So we are going to use this fact in all of the limits that we do today. The fact that um, as x goes to infinity, a reciprocal goes to 0, right? That's, that's going to be the main principle for today.